the Dining at Disney Podcast. The Dining at Disney Podcast. Your ultimate source for the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resort. You'll discover all the best restaurants and food as you hungrily explore the Disney parks. Let's do this thing! The Dining at Disney Podcast. And now your hosts, Kristen and Bubba. Welcome to the Dining at Disney Podcast. I'm Kristen. With me is the Disneyland food expert, Bubba. How yes. you doing, Bubba? I'm excellent. Great three days we celebrated Cinco de Mayo, May the 4th, May the 6th, or May the 5th, however you say it. And, <laughs> uh, well, today, so because as you mentioned, Cinco de Mayo, because of Cinco de Mayo this week, we are going to be talking about our favorite Mexican restaurants in places to get drinks like margaritas at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. If this is your first time here, welcome. Those of you who've been here before, nice to have you back again. Uh, Bubba and I are both Disney Park annual pass holders, so we've got lots to say when it comes to food. It's our favorite thing. So... I guess I'll start off mentioning uh, two places that I like to go for drinks. One of them is called Boardwalk Joe, isn't it? It's like a little tiny kiosk, and it's located in Disney Springs. And it's mainly, it's got like a few little snack things, but it's pretty much all about margaritas. Yes. They do have other drinks, but they focus on, on margaritas. And one of my favorite ones that they have is the Marvelous Watermelon Margarita. Mm, And it's made with Patron Silver Tequila, watermelon, lime juice, and some sweet and sour. But it's a great place to stop. They do have uh, live music often there, but it's a great place to make a little stop, have a drink, and listen to some music. That sounds fun. Oh, I mean, even the model watermelon margarita, you even know that's one of my favorites. I even posted a picture <laughs> of that on my, on my uh, Facebook the other day. It was just, it's, I love my watermelon margaritas. Oh, they're always good. Always. So I have uh, another location and this one's actually in the park. It's in Epcot and it's La Cava del Tequila. This place is located in the big pyramid that you have in, inside the Mexico Pavilion. And when you enter, it's off on the right side. It looks like a little hole in the wall place. It is small, but they have phenomenal margaritas there. And it is a must do for us whenever we're at Epcot. And they've got some really unique ones. I'm going to read just a couple of them. Uh, They have a wild passion fruit, blood orange, minty pineapple, horchata. They have one called the La Cava Avocado. And it's uh, tequila with melon liqueur, fresh avocado, agave nectar, and fresh lime juice. This one is served frozen, and it's got a hibiscus salt rim. It's really, really good to have with something that's spicy. Uh, Being frozen and having the avocado, it just kind of helps cool your mouth down if you've had something hot. Now, Mm. one of my favorites, because I like heat, is the Maelstrom. And it is named after the former attraction that was in the neighboring pavilion of Norway. And this one is tequila blanco, mango puree. It has habanero peppers, blueberries, and basil. It's served on the rocks with a chili powder rim. Now, if you Mm -hmm. like things hot, you can always ask them to make it even hotter for you. Uh, They're really good about doing that. And they do have like snack food and things like that on their menu. There's uh, a couple things like chips and salsa, guacamole, just little kind of snack type things. It's not a place where you're going to go sit down, have a meal. It's just all about going there to drink. 
And <laughs> they do have those of you that like uh, mezcal. They do have that. If you're into the worm or the scorpion in the bottle, they have that as well. <laughs> so you can oh, wow. actually request if they've got it and somebody hasn't already had it to uh, have the Scorpio out of the bottle. Scorpion. I don't eat bugs, so that's not that's not for me. But I try. It. Are people that dig that? <laughs> I try. It. I definitely would. Al John has both John him has. and and Jeff Davis. Yeah, from, if I remember, uh, yeah, the, yeah. DW sixty back in the day, we were there having drinks, and they both split the scorpion, and I was like, <laughs> uh, no, no. But they do it like Lady in the Tramp style. They split the scorpion. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. Get the tail end. You get the claw end. <laughs> Okay, Bubba, so do you have a couple uh, places you would like to mention? Do I? I mean, yes, of course, you cannot drink inside Disneyland, but um, at Disney Cal- at California Adventure and in downtown Disney, you definitely can drink. Um, well, actually, sorry, Disneyland, there is one place, and I will mention they do have one of the best margaritas. If you go to Uga's Cantina, and you've had this too, the Outer Rim, one of my favorite drinks in the whole resort. And it has Patron Silver, Cadillac Asiai Liquor, Lime Juice, Pure Cane Sugar, and a black salt that covers the rim. And they put an exotic fu- uh, fruit puree on top. And yes, this it's a very strong tequila, first of all. So they don't, they do pour a bit heavy. But it is, like I said, it's one of the best margaritas I've had ever. And you've had it too. So I know, yeah. What did you think? I thought I was good. I like, you know what? I like that place though. They've got some really unique drinks at Olga's. And I mean, it's, they're just fun and different and you can't get them anywhere else. So yeah. that's, that's kind of my thing. I like I like what's different. I love trying new things that are different that you just can't get anywhere. Exactly. And then also in California Adventure, I know there's a lot of meat, a lot of fans out there. So you can definitely go to the Hollywood Backlot and get, um, go to, uh, towards the Monsters, Inc. ride. There they have uh, micheladas. They are served with, uh, you know, tomato juice, hot sauce, tahini. They they put the tahini on the outside of the cup uh, and you could choose basically your favorite beer over at uh, Bayside Brewers. They also do micheladas, but you can add Michelob Ultra, Stella, Pacifico, um, Sculptin, uh, you know, any of those type of beers you can add to the michelada and they're really good from, I'm not a big michelada fan. I mean, I've had a mild one before, uh, but you know, a lot of people like them spicy. They they definitely can make them spicy for you there too. So micheladas are a, are a hit also. I mean, you'll, every three, four people that's holding one of those green neon cups, one of them's a michelada. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But have you had one before, a michelada? I have. It's, it's been a while. It's okay. While. It's not really my thing. But I mean, I've people go all out to- on these. People go all out. They'll add bacon, shrimp. Uh, of course, like celery, like a margarita, all sorts of stuff. I mean, we're seeing the ones with the shrimp are really crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting some of the the drinks that you know people have yes, come up with, is. and that one is is an unusual one that I'm just not all about. <laughs> I know a lot of people who like them. Not me though. I'm not big on it. Or, or, or they add clamato juice to their beer. Some that I know a lot of my family likes to do. Uh, no, I don't. I don't mm, no, I want my beer just by itself, unless it's like some. There's a a cocktail at a place called the Edison, and they use an IPA. It's a it's a beer cocktail, but they use an IPA, and I don't like IPAs. But this drink is amazing like it just is balances everything out 
So uh, it's the only beer cocktail I've had that I've been like, yeah, I, I can drink this. For the most part, yeah. I want my beer as just beer. As beer. Straight beer. I, I will like have frozen one. beer. That's good. I've had beer with ice cream. That's <gasps> beer floats. Good. Oh, yeah. Floats. Yeah. So I'll add that. <laughs> um, and then also at Tortilla Joe's in downtown Disney, uh, they're very famous for their picture of margaritas. We've had pictures of margaritas there before. Yes, we have. So, I mean, and uh, they don't make them as heavy as, you know, I feel like, I think last time we went through, you guys went through a picture and you weren't even buzzed, but I can't, I'm trying to remember. Uh, they need more alcohol in this. Yeah. I don't know, this has been a while. But yeah, if you want to go get a nice, good pitcher of margaritas, take a break from the park, go right to Tortilla Joe's. Yeah, I like Tortilla Joe's. That's a fun place to go to. It is fun, yes. And they have outdoor seating. I love sitting outside. And happy hour, and they have a brunch also. So, yeah. Ooh, I have not tried their brunch. Yes. I they need to try that sometime. I'm, yeah, I've never had their brunch either, so... Well, I've got a couple of other places to mention. Um, one of them is in Magic Kingdom. If you're looking for a little bit of Mexican there, there is Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. And they have a fajita platter. There's chicken nachos, pork carnita rice bowl, chicken bowls, taco trio. So they've got some delicious things it's not it's not really like a like must have mexican food kind of place but if you're mm -hmm. craving some mexican and you're in the magic kingdom that's the place to go to and go to. and get that that craving fulfilled but when i'm looking for Mexican food, and I'm at Disney. I have two restaurants that I usually hint. Um, there is one inside uh, the Mexico Pavilion called San Angel Inn. It's got a beautiful atmosphere. It's for those who haven't ever been to Walt Disney World. Uh, it's like over in Disneyland, the blue bayou that's inside the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction, it sits on the water. This sits on the Mexico attraction, which is um, the Three Caballeros. So you've got a beautiful view inside. It's nice and air conditioned. Food's okay. It's not my go-to place. Mine is actually outside the pyramid and it's La Hacienda de San Angel. This restaurant has an amazing view. I always tell people if you're going to dine there at, and it's only open for dinner, but if you're going to dine there, make sure to get there about hour, hour and a half before illuminations is supposed to take place and then get a seat by the, uh, by the windows because you have the perfect view there for the nighttime show over the World Showcase Lagoon. It's really cool. And the food's good. They've got queso fundido. Uh, the tacos are really good. Uh, chili relleno. Theirs is actually stuffed, stuffed with shrimp. So it's mm. a little bit different. They do have two different things that you can order that are uh, intended for two people to share. And one is cool. Del Mar, and it's got grilled shrimp, fish, scallops. And then the other one is for your people who like land animals. So you have what's called your La Hacienda, and it's the grilled New York strip, a pastor marinated uh, chicken breast, and chorizo. Ooh, and they have cool. some delicious desserts, too. So that's my place when I'm in Epcot. But outside of that... One place that it opened a couple years ago, and it's owned by celebrity chef Rick Bayless, and it's his Frontera Cochina, and they're open for lunch or dinner, and I went the day that they opened for lunch, like, as the doors opened, I was there <laughs> to try the food, 
and it's very good. I've been back since then. They have an amazing chicken tortilla soup. Their guacamole is really good, but they've got like a pork belly taco, carne asada tacos, and they also have their own bar inside. So if you're just in for like drinks and you want just a couple snacks or dessert, grab a seat at the bar, get your drink, get whatever snacks you want, and you're good to go. But I definitely recommend getting either their tacos, do the guacamole. Uh, I haven't tried their carne asada, but I've heard it's really good. So, but yeah, that one's located in Disney Springs. So, because I don't think I mentioned that before, but it's located in Disney Springs. And it is an excellent place. They do have sangria as well as like tequila flights and stuff like that too, if that's more your thing. Well, I just, you know what? I'm pulling up some menus right now that you're talking about. And there's a little um, notification up on top saying that Disney Springs is planning on reopening May 20th for the first phase. I don't know if that's true yet. I don't know that. I mean, this is on the Disney website. Yeah. 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 Are you seeing that too? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to Disneyland. It says temporary closure, but Disney Springs is, yeah, they're going to open April 20th. It looks like. Okay. Wow, you guys. Yeah, are I'm. I'm hoping that means that at the beginning of June, we'll see parks and resorts. Wow, that would be nice. That's a good sign, though. That is a really good sign. The park is reopening. Yeah. So, lucky. That's breaking news <laughs> on here right now. Okay. Hey. <laughs> yeah, but so far, yes, it's not. It. Uh, because we don't want to confuse anybody. It's not the theme parks or the resort hotel. Yes, it's, it's just, the, yeah. just Disney Spring. And mm-hmm. and I think the good thing about that is you're going to have the locals then that are going to be able to go out and start dining and enjoying that. And it'll give, you know, it's Disney's way of getting its feet wet without yes. not being, you know, to test the waters they're just testing the waters right yeah. now let's see but so all right cool <laughs> i am excited to see that yeah that's good news so Bubba, what other places did you have on your list i have one of the i mean it's one of the only mexican restaurants uh inside disneyland there's not really one inside dca um but uh Rancho Del Zocalo, I always talk about it on the show. One of my favorite spots. Um, it's right there in Frontierland in front of the Mark Twain a docking area, uh, kind of across from the Golden Horseshoe. And it's a nice, relaxing spot. Um, you've got a nice, you have, oh, you also have Thunder Ranch or Thunder Mountain right there, too. So you can see people getting oh, on yeah. the and going by you. Uh, so, like I said, it is a relaxing spot. They do have some shade over there if you, it's on a hot day. Uh, they also have some fans, if, a couple areas where there's fans, too, where you can cool down. But as for the menu, it is, you know, on not a basic menu, uh, but anything you can expect from a Mexican restaurant. They have fish tacos. Uh, their citrus fire grilled chicken is amazing. I haven't had it in a while. Uh, what I usually always get is the carne asada uh, and the red chili enchilada platter. Or the, um, the it's something off the secret menu. We'll go over the secret menu in a bit. But that's one of the most popular dishes, in my opinion, is the carne asada and the red chili enchilada platter. And that's with uh, two cheese enchiladas, Mexican rice, beans. And the carne asada, they, they don't cook it in front of you, but it's, it's as fresh as you can get it cooked. There is a grill uh, master right there grilling the car grilling a few pieces so if you want a piece well done he'll throw it right back on the grill and get it well done if you want it a little bit rare he'll throw a fresh piece on for you and cook it to rare or medium rare you know so that's what's great about that uh getting the carne asada there and so uh, to to uh to add on to the thing about the carne asada i have always avoided 
carne asada. I, for the most, I'm very particular about my steak. So often I don't order steak unless it's a place that I know will always get it perfect for me mm. every time I'm there. So the one time you were working and Taylor and I were hanging out at the park and she wanted to, to stop there. And I asked her, you know, what's good? She's like, oh, the carne asada. And I was like, I don't know. So I was like, let me see what yours looks like when they, you know, put that together. And I saw it and saw them cut it. And I was like, oh, it's cooked right. And it's not dry looking. It looks very moist and tender like it should be. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have that too. So now that's like my go-to dish there. I used to try something different every time, but now after having that, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. That's where I have to go to get my carne asada. <laughs> yes, that's, it is. It's very succulent too. Just, it's a nice, you know, it's not too thick. It's not too thin. Um, just kind of like the perfect piece for you to have. Uh, but on the secret menu, there is something called the Zocalo burrito. So this isn't on the regular menu. Okay. It's a secret menu item. Not only does it have carne asada, but it has chicken and it also has pork. It has all three of those meats in the burrito with uh, peppers and onions, beans and rice, uh, salsa. And then on top, they add three sauces that kind of make it look like a Mexican flag. They add a green sauce, a white sauce, and a red sauce. Very and nice. it is a very big burrito. Um, you're probably going to look anywhere around like, eighteen nineteen dollars for this burrito but it is amazing you can share it too I'll, if you want to share that but yes it is an amazing burrito all three meats you can't go wrong with that um, you know so if somebody doesn't like pork oh well you could eat this and this is the chicken end right here so as long as you don't have that middle end you're fine <laughs> um, that's cool yeah and then they have stuff you know like they have cauliflower tacos if uh, you know you're not not enjoying meats you want cauliflower they have those type of tacos. They have different types of salads, Caesar salad. Their tostada salads are amazing also. The chicken has a nice kick to it, or you can get the beef. They come in a nice just fried tortilla shell, uh, refried beans, chopped lettuce, cilantro lime vinaigrette, uh, sour cream, guacamole, pico de gallo, black bean, corn relish, and they top it with cheese. It, that's also something you can share too, and it's not too expensive either. It's around $13, $14 depending on if you get beef or chicken. Um, I think, I'm, I don't know if you've seen one before, seen me have one before. Uh, I don't think so. And then they also have a kid's menu where you can just do um, beans and rice or a bean and cheese burrito or chicken tacos. And the desserts, they have the best cinnamon chips there. They are made fresh over at right there. And it's got a nice, good sweetness to it. You could have around the park. Uh, they also have lime chips too. I haven't seen them in a, in a while, but sometimes they'll make the uh, salty lime chips. Are the cinnamon chips like flour tortillas that they've? Yes, they are. Yes, and they're nice, crisp. They're crispy too. Next time I need to get those because way way back in the day, Taco Bell used to have their yes. own like version of that before they went to the cinnamon twist. And those things were the best dessert that they've ever had. I like the little Cinnabon things, but I'll tell you, there was something about those chips and I miss them all the time and wish they would switch back to them. So next time I'm there, I'm going to have to get those. <laughs> I need to speak with your manager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like I said, it's a nice area. It's, they used to have free refills. I'm kind of disappointed they don't do that anymore. Uh, so, oh, well. They definitely won't be doing that in the near future. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Do you have any other places? Um, yeah, I actually have another place. There's a lot of Elote fans out there, and Disneyland finally started doing something about that uh, about a year or two ago. And at uh, California Adventure in the Cozy Cone, they have the Elote Cozy Corn. Cozy Corn. Oh, I can't even spell, spell, spell it. Elote Cozy Corn. And you can get three types of uh, elotes, a spicy lime, a cheese puff, or a spicy cheese puff. 
So uh, I highly recommend if you like elotes, go over there, get one of those. You're going to enjoy those. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds good. I don't have any other place to mention. Those are like the ones that I gave are like my favorite. We, I mean, we'll have an old another conversation on churros. I mean, this this show this show is dedicated to churros as it is the <laughs> staple of Disney. But now there's like twenty different flavors you can get all around the park, and it's kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, so sometimes, dude, we'll have to do that as like a bonus, a bonus show. Well, I want to try to do. I, yeah, I want to. They even have like I believe they had like a map too, where there's like ten locations you can go. You get them filled with you get it filled out, you know, you get a prize, but uh, I got to find that map. Okay. So, so we're going to have to, in the next couple of weeks, we'll do a bonus show. <laughs> the bonus churro special show. The churro special. Hey, it needs its own special. That's how special <laughs> it is. Well, that is our show for today. We hope you enjoyed it and that Next time you're craving a little bit of Mexican in the park that we've given you some great recommendations of places to uh, fulfill that, that hunger for delicious Mexican food and margaritas. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, and click our notification bell so you know whenever we post new content. Also, share with your friends. If you haven't already, we are on Anchor, so make sure you like, subscribe, that stuff. Uh, on Anchor, we're also available on Breaker, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Spotify. So we have multiple places that you can enjoy based on whatever your preference is. So you'll definitely want to check us out there. Also, go to diningatdisney.com. We are going to be making some changes to the site there, but you can always help us out a little bit uh, just by shopping our affiliate links there. We've got Amazon, the Disney Store, and a few others that you can always check out. And then uh, on our Patreon page, we've got some special things there, depending on if you would like to help out the show and donate. We've got perks for our Patreon fans. As always, you can check out Dining at Disney at diningatdisney.com. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can catch this video on YouTube. So if you're listening to the podcast form, you can always check out the video of Bubba and I on YouTube as well. So Bubba, when you're not posting about Disney food via Dining at Disney, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram at big underscore Bubba underscore B. Give me a like and say hello and uh, let's be friends. Uh, also, make sure you check out uh, the Disney List. That podcast goes live uh, on Sundays on Facebook. You can catch the show on Sorcerer Radio. That's at srsounds.com. Or you can check out the Sorcerer Radio app and download that. It's absolutely free. For those of you that are into visiting the Walt Disney World parks, make sure you check out our friends, WDW Park Hoppers, live on Facebook every Thursday. They go live at 7 p.m. And when the parks and restaurants and bars are open, you can catch WDW uh, Park Hoppers at a park, Park Hopper John, Park Hopper Sid. They broadcast from either a restaurant or a bar each week. And if you're looking for some Facebook fun, don't forget to check out the Sorcerer Radio Fun Zone, as well as our friends over in the Disney Dork. There's a lot of fun shenanigans and entertaining going on in those two groups for you guys. Until next time, I'm Kristen. With me, as always, is my fantastic co-host, Bubba. <laughs> Until next time, bon appetit. 
This podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its holdings and is intended for entertainment purposes.